Hello, friends, and thank you for logging on to another Staying Home and Staying Connected webinar series featuring Flood Risk America. My name is Alex Turner, and I'm a Business Development Manager for Associate Gulf Coast Management. And like you, I've been staying home and staying safe over the last couple of months. However, Associate has been staying, also staying very busy, bringing education to the safety of your living rooms. I wanna be a resource to you, your board and your community during and after this COVID pause. Please think of me if you have any management questions, educational opportunities or vendor needs. I can be a service to you in all of these areas. And like you, while I don't wanna rush the progress we have been making, I am ready to get back out there and living life again. But recently I have shifted my focus from daily COVID response to now hurricane prep for our communities. We are less than a month away from the official start of hurricane season. And if you don't already have your hurricane plan together and communicated to your community, it's time to get started on this ASAP. Please let me be help, um, helpful to you in this. Also, do you know what your insurance policy covers? What flood zone you're in? Uh, these are all important questions that you need to know the answers to. Today, we're so fortunate to catch up with Stephen Gill and Tiffany with Flood Risk America. I was so fortunate to hear them speak before the world closed its doors, and I was really impressed by their knowledge of flood insurance, flood levels, hurricanes, and other water disasters that can be devastating to your communities, common areas, and amenities. Stephen is the partner and CEO of Flood Risk Canada and Flood Risk America. Take note, my Canadian friends, this goes for you too. He has over 20 years experience in flood risk analysis, specializing in flood zone preparedness, flood disaster management, and helping property owners to acquire better flood coverage, lower deductibles, and better sublimits. Tiffany is the partner and COO of Flood Risk America and Flood Risk Canada. She has over five years experience in flood risk analysis, analysis, excuse me, and flood mitigation. Her master's in is, is in advanced holistic nursing, and she is a board certified holistic nurse. So not only she, can she protect you from floods, but she can also heal you. <laughs> so with that said, we're gonna turn it over to uh, Stephen and Tiffany, and they're gonna present to us. Thanks for being with us today, guys. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having us. So we're going to first talk about some of the preventative measures for flood protection. And then once we go through the preventative measures and some of the services, then we'll move on to some of the products that you can use to help protect you in a flooding emergency. The first thing we're going to talk about is a flood risk assessment. And so basically what an assessment is, is it shows you um, what current flood zone you're in, and then we can also help you through um, any preliminary flood maps that are out there. And so basically what this does is it allows you um, a true understanding of your flood risk and any corrections to inaccurate flood zones that you may be on the map. So if you feel that you're paying a really high rate for your flood insurance or something just doesn't seem right, um, sometimes there's instances where you could be in the wrong flood zone. And so this is just a small case study that shows um, sometimes you can save 85% um, on your flood insurance premium um, and there's different ways in which you can um, be in the incorrect flood zone, especially if there's different problems with elevations um, on your property, and if they're incorrect, it can leave you um, in the wrong flood zone. Tiffany, before you There's start the next slide, I just want to interject real quickly because I think some people may think that this is sort of a one-off, doesn't really happen, or may not really be a thing. So in my, just in the last couple of years, I've had two associations, condo associations, um, have this looked at and realized that they were in the wrong flood zone. One of our associations received five years of refunds back for um, uh, that totaled about $15,000. And another one had a, a whole building that was in the wrong zone. So this is something that actually happens and really needs to be looked at. Yeah, that's, that's very correct. Sometimes also, um, whenever they're creating the flood map, a shadow can over um, can be over the property, which would make the building in the wrong flood zone. And that has happened too, and we've seen those cases as well. So sometimes it's very silly things that put people in the wrong flood zones um, that we've, we've noticed. And so it's always good if you have a question about this 
to get your property looked at. Um, and it's, you know, it's free of cost too. It's, there's no, there's no charge to find out if you're in the right or wrong flood zone as well. Zone verification. And so basically, um, we talked about the flood risk assessment to know if you're in or out of the flood zone. Um, we also have something um, called flood modeling, um, and that uses a drone. And you'll see the picture of the drone on here. It uses LIDAR technology. Um, and basically what it does is it's modeling that's done in a 100 and a 500 year storm. And we look at historical flooding from the area, heavy rainfall. And basically we take all of this data um, and if we feel that there's incorrections to some of these things, then we can use the drone and then we can help to challenge FEMA on the ground elevations on the property. So there's a lot of different ways in which um, that you might be rated improperly that you can be looked at um, and then also um, challenge, the, challenge FEMA on those inaccurizations and then try to you know, do different things to change the ratings. So there's many different options um, to look at, especially if you're, you're concerned about you know, your property and where you're located. Um, and then we've also had people too that, have, that had um, properties that were next to them that were paying way less than they did and, and that's when they came to us. So there's so many different um, things that can be done. This is an example of a property um, and I'm gonna show you two different pictures. And so in this picture, these people wanted to have this property for a long period of time, um, and they wanted to know what their risk was. So we used all sorts of types of information. Um, we used the LIDAR technology, we used historical data, um, and a plethora of other things. And basically, they wanted to know what their, um, what their risk was going to be in a um, category one versus a category five hurricane. And since they were gonna have this property for over 50 years, we started in 2017 and we went all the way up every five years looking at what their risk would be. So for example, if a hurricane was to hit them in, in 2017, if a category one was gonna hit them, they were gonna have zero to four feet of water in the front part of their building and then also in the back area. This is important to understand too because if you have this, this data, then you can be well protected in the future um, of any flooding as well. If you look at this picture, you'll notice that um, in a category five in 2017, if it was to hit them, that they would have 12 to 16 feet of water and there would be you know, a, a substantial amount of damage that could occur. It's nice to have this information because you can also use it towards a vulnerability assessment to know, okay, well, I need this much uh, feet of protection around my building, we can use this. All of this data can be used in an active plan. And so that brings us to the vulnerability assessment. And so basically what this does is we would take an, an architect and um, an engineer and a, a bunch of different people to come to the building and do a consultation service and assessment on the property. We're gonna look at all of the essential equipment. We're gonna look at any elevators, any parking equipment. Um, we're gonna look at anywhere where your generators are located, your power sources, anything that's of expensive or valuable um, assets we're going to be looking at to make sure they're at the proper level. We would be looking at any different parts of the building where water could possibly enter. And so it's important because sometimes we don't, we wouldn't think that water would enter from different sources. We're worried about the, the things that we see the biggest where, you know, water might come from, uh, from the lake or from the, the coastal ocean or wherever we think it might enter there, but sometimes it can enter through sewer drains or through some other source. And so the assessment is really important to help you um, really take a hold of, of all of those different areas and the essential parts um, and to protect you for future. Flood safety plan. Um, this is also important for an active deployment during a flood emergency. So knowing, um, you know, if you have flood protection, it, have you checked your flood protection lately? Do you have any maintenance on it? Some people will use different types of flood protection and they leave it in their storage unit. They don't check it for years because they didn't have to use it. And then when they do have to use it, there are things wrong with it. It's missing their gaskets. Um, all of those things are really important to look at whenever you um, are going to face a flooding emergency. You want to have a proactive approach. Um, blueprints are also important. So maybe you have all of these flood panels, but you have no idea how to put them up, where they go, um, which area you know, they're designated to. And so that's a really important part of this flood safety plan. It allows you um, 
a, a true understanding of where you are going to deploy things, how they go up, how long it may take them, so that you're actively prepared for emergency. So now we're going to talk about some products um, for, for a flooding emergency. And when we talk about the word dry flood proofing, dry flood proofing, for it to be effective enough, it has to be high enough, it has to be, it has to be able to resist the forces of flood water, and it also has to be sealed well enough. So these are the three important things that you, you must understand whenever you're looking for flood proofing products. So the first thing we're going to talk about are flood panels. Um, these flood panels are, um, you, may have, you may have been um, more familiar with a steel panel or, or a different type of panel you may have seen before. Um, these are quite different. Um, the biggest difference is they're very, very lightweight. Um, they're made from a marine grade material used in the hull of an icebreaker. They come with a lifetime warranty. They're made here in, in the USA, in Florida, um, and they're all custom custom fabricated. So you'll see in the next couple pictures, um, in the next couple slides, there's so many different ways that you can use these and we'll show some of the ways that they have been used on different properties to help them um, alleviate um, flooding damages. And so they withstand 13,000 PSI. They're very easy to remove and install and we'll show you some of those different pictures too as well. You're also going to notice throughout the throughout these pictures that some of the, the panels will be very high, some of them will be only two feet, some of them will be very long. Um, and you might ask, well, how, you know, how do we have these different sizes? Well, we help to model those different sizes to let you know what your protection needs would be. And so a lot of people ask the question, well, how does it adhere um, to a surface? And so you'll notice that there's a gasket that goes all the way around. Um, this particular uh, panel is on a stucco wall. I'll also show you pictures of a brick wall. And what's, what's very interesting is as soon as the, the um, bolts are compressed, the gasket goes against the wall into an uneven surface, so no water can penetrate behind that. A lot of people will ask, well, what does it look like when it's not in use? Um, you can see these pictures here. You'll notice that there's decorative caps that go over the anchors. So the anchors are placed about approximately 12 inches apart, depending, and they can be further apart as well. Um, and then there's just a cap that goes on top of the anchor when they're not in use. People prefer to keep some of their panels up all year round because they don't have they don't have to go in to access those different points of their building. And then some people prefer, of course, you know, you're going to use your elevator, you're going to use your control room and other things. You take the panel down after the storm is over. And these are the caps that go on. The caps can also come in different colors. They can match the decor of your building. There are different um, there are different options for that as well. This is a picture of Steve on the left-hand side. Um, you can notice that it's a very lightweight material. Um, we designed it this way because there were other panels out there that were steel and they were very heavy and people needed a forklift in an emergency, such as Irma and some of the other hurricanes that came through. And we realized that this is not okay. You need to be able to put up your panels on your own. And so you can notice that it's, they're very lightweight and easy to move. Um, this is, these are board members um, deploying for Dorian together. After we had shown them how we've, we installed them, we showed them how to put them up and we gave them their own um, deployment plan. Um, this is them. They, they took some pictures of themselves putting them up and showing us that they could do it and it was very easy for them. Here's some installation on buildings. Um, this one is in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, you can see it's a storefront or in the top of the, the condo and it goes all the way around and it's an uneven surface of the brick. And again, you'll notice the different sizes and heights and widths of the panels. This is on um, a storage protection. The bottom is a storage protection. Again, the top is, is the condo. Um, you can notice there's L brackets that, that um, will fit in between on the, on the sides and on the bottom of the panels that help put it in place because you can see that the wall comes out a little bit on the left-hand side and they all fit snugly in there. That's about a 30 foot panel. Um, we've done um, panels again on elevators too. So you'll see this is an installation on an elevator. And then also you'll notice that sometimes you have a certain amount of money that you can put aside for different phases. So if you wanna have a phase one and a phase two of the project, we can build panels that um, allow you to um, connect together too as well. 
This is an example of a really long um, panel. This is over 200 feet, we, over 40 feet of protection. We had just recently did one in Miami as well that's over 200 feet of protection that wraps all the way around a building, which is really neat. Um, when, they, when the panels get a little bit longer, um, you'll notice that we'll use like a, a T protection on the, to, to have an, an extra secure to still maintain the 13,000 PSI. Here are some other examples of panels, just so you kind of get an idea of, of what we can do with them. Um, we use them on vents, um, generators. You can notice the panel on the bottom left-hand corner, it goes around and wraps around the curbs. We have them on the elevators. Um, we have them on um, control rooms um, in, in a lot of different instances. But here's just a couple different examples and you can see how they're used. This is the example of um, flood panel covers on, on drain covers or manholes. Um, this is actually outside of a hospital um, in Tampa. And what was happening is they had flood protection all around their building, but they were still flooding. And where they were flooding from, and this came from the vulnerability assessment that we had, that we had taken and undergone, the water was actually coming up through the manholes and they were still getting flooding because the, the panel protection was on the outside of it that they had that they were using and they were still flooding. So we did a great assessment on their property and we found that um, we can help secure them and help protect them from flooding by covering some of their manholes too as well. These are what we call the FRA protection boxes. The protection boxes can stay up, they can be taken down. You'll notice that there's a little bit of ventilation on them because some of them um, have equipment that's a little bit warm and needs some breathing room too as well. And so the boxes are, again are custom made for each different um, for each different thing. Some of them are on generators um, which control the entire hospital, which is very important that you want to make sure that they keep them dry. Um, and then you'll see a lot of them are control room panels, um, a lot of different boxes on just expensive equipment that cannot get wet, but they can also not be moved. So you can see the difference in those two as well. And this is all using the panel protection. Um, we put this picture on there too so you can see um, what we're protecting and then also all the different steps, um, just putting it together like a little, like a little puzzle. Um, it's very simple, they all slide together with a spline technique and then you just hand tighten them. We're going to move on to the wind-driven rain protection. Now, some people don't have a problem with, um, with rising flood water, but they may have a problem with wind-driven rain protection. And so this is where this comes into play. And what's nice about this fabric is it's, um, it's also bulletproof. You can use it um, in many different instances. Some people in this instance, and you'll see it on the next slide too as well, they use it in conjunction with their um, flood panel. So they have now wind-driven rain protection and also rising flood water. Um, it's designed to withstand wind loads up to 170 miles per hour. Like I said before, it's also bulletproof and it comes in many different colors too as well. It's going to anchor the kind of the same way that the panel does. Um, about every 12 inches apart or maybe a little bit more and there's also a little gasket that's sewn into the side and all around it so that no water can get through. Here's the example of the before and after of putting the hurricane um, impediment shield up. You can also use this on windows. Um, there's there's uh, endless possibilities of what you can do with the fabric too as well. Um, and so whenever we're showing you this presentation we have our examples of, of um, things that we've done for people, but everything that we do is custom. So if you see something on here, you like the fabric and there's, you know, there may be a different way that it can be used to as well for your property. Flood barriers, um, these are water-filled flood barriers. You'll notice that these ones here are double chambered. Um, they come in different heights and sizes. They come in 50 foot sections, they can be smaller sections, um, and they can go all the way up to 10 feet. And so basically these just fill up with, um, with they're like made out of a fire hose material. They're, they're filled with water. Um, you can use the water from your pool, the water from, a, from the lake or, or from wherever, whatever source. And you use um, a hose attachment to fill it up. And then it just rises. And then once the water is in there, it, it adheres to the surface. Um, and this is an example of the double chamber one. And then you'll see some single chambered ones too as well.
And here's just a couple more examples of water-filled flood barriers. Um, we have a bunch of different products on here because some people need, you know, some people have different needs. So some people, the flood barriers won't work versus the flood panels work better versus maybe they have just problems with wind-driven rain and, and, and whatever else. This is an example of a, um, a flood bag for unmovable equipment. So we showed you the boxes that can be used for unmovable equipment. This is another example. You can use the fabric. Um, and the bottom part is the, um, the flood panel. And it's again, it's anchored down with the gasket. And then the bag goes, um, the fabric goes on top and it's completely dry. So this is an example of, um, there was a, a parking garage. Um, this specific picture was in, in Brickell in Miami. And during Irma, all, everything was, was flooding and they needed a, a solution. So um, we came up with this for them and they've used it and it kept everything dry for them. It can also again be used on generators or you know anything else that's unmovable. We also do waterproofing. You'll notice that the, the FRA guides here are waterproofing both the outside and the inside. Um, it can be used for interior and exterior walls, elevator pits, um, all sorts of things. Um, it's a volatile organic compound. It's non-toxic. Education is, is very important to us. And so whenever we um, show you some of these products, we want to make sure that you understand how they use them and how they're deployed. Um, and so what we do for people is we do flood deployment training for all of their products. Um, we also um, give you a, de a deployment blueprint and a plan on how um, to put them up. We do you know, videos, we do training, we go on site and show you how they're installed. Um, and how they're deployed. And then we also give you a FEMA approved maintenance plan too as well. So it's really important that you understand your products. If you have different maintenance people coming in um, and they have never used it before, it's important to have extra training so they know how to use it and how to deploy it um, for a flooding emergency. And here's our information if you have any questions. Um, you can contact us. Um, Eskill at floodriskamerica.com, Tiffany at floodriskamerica.com, or you can visit our website at www.floodriskamerica.com. Thanks, Tiffany. That was awesome. That was equally as impress impressive as the first time I saw it. Um, I just had a few questions I wrote down during our during the presentation. Um, if an association is interested in any of the um, getting their flood zone reevaluated. what's their first step in that? Their first step would be to contact us. Um, basically what we would need is like an address. We like to have um, a declaration page and an elevation certificate on the property. Um, if those aren't available, um, there's some of the ways that we can work around it, um, but the address and, and other information surrounding it is, is, is important to us. Okay, and um, you you use the term 13, I don't know if it's 13,000 PSI. Can you explain that a little bit further for those of us who aren't 100% sure what that means? I'm going to give this question to Steve because he's really good at knowing the, um, there's a difference between the water percentage and there's a difference between wind protection. Um, the panels are going to satisfy us both between wind and water. Um, he knows the measurements between um, the water and the wind, so I'm going to give this one to him. Okay. I think he actually uh, left. He was on the road, everybody, so he um, did he did drop off. So we'll 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 get that answer and I'll put it in the email. Um, and you mentioned the training that you guys offer to inst to deploy these products, which I think is just so necessary. So is that both, like, would that be both for board members, maintenance men, or a contracted handyman or whomever might be putting this up for the, for the board? Yeah, absolutely. So what we do is a lot of times people ask us to do the installation of the product. So we install the product. Um, and then usually we come back at a later day or we can do it the same day whenever um, it's convenient for the maintenance crew or whoever it is that's going to deploy it. So, for instance, you saw the pictures of the board members. They were the ones that wanted to deploy the panels. Um, so we come out, we schedule a day with you guys, 
and um, we show you how to put them up. So we've already installed them. So what we're doing is we're just actually taking them out of the storage. We're putting them up for you and we're hand tightening and we're, and we're showing you where they go. Um, we have blueprints that go with it that show where they go because maybe you have more than one flood panel that you had to purchase. Um, and we, we kind of just give you an update on it. I have a, another client that just contacted me because they have a new maintenance crew that came in and um, we're gonna go out and we're gonna redo the, um, the whole deployment so that they can, they can see it again. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think, it, it, so if a board member, if they were gonna do it themselves and had an issue, they could just call you guys and you'd send somebody out to look at it? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we wanna make sure everybody's prepared that you don't you know, get these, you know, this protection. And that's, I think that's a big part of, of where we come in and where we're really different because most other companies are just going to drop off the panels to you. They're gonna have them shipped to you or maybe install them possibly and then kind of walk away, you know? Um, and we wanna make sure that everybody understands because that's the most important thing. And we've seen it so many times where people have called us because they had another type of flood protection, they don't know how to use it. If the gaskets are all, you know, um, messed up on them, and you know, if they would put them up, they're not going to work properly. And and then we've seen, you know, we couldn't move them because they didn't have a um, a forklift. Because you know, once you get into a bigger panel and they and they're made out of steel or aluminum, they're really heavy, and and people have a hard time, you know, doing anything with them. Sure, and yours are actually very deceiving because they look very heavy, but uh, I understand that they're not. <laughs> yeah, they, they look very heavy, but they're not they're not heavy at all whatsoever. Um, each panel is less than 90 pounds. I think that we actually we actually make them to be 88, each panel to be like less than 88 pounds. Wow, that's awesome. Um, so our clients that will be tuning into this are, are representative of um, single family home communities with, you know, maybe clubhouses or common area buildings, high rise, low rise, mid, mid rise condos, villas. Do these, uh, do all of these um, preventative measures work for all these types of housing? Absolutely. Um, actually, condos are our, our, our favorite buildings to protect um, just because it's we get like a very um, good connection with with everybody. We get to meet all the board members. We get to meet everyone. Um, and we've we've protected a lot of different condos across Florida, um, anywhere from Miami, Jacksonville, Tampa, um, Sarasota, kind of all over the area um, where we've we've helped protect people. And there's so many different, everything that we've shown you in here, we've had different um, clients use. And then sometimes you're not just gonna use a flood panel or you know for your entire building, you might be using flood panels for this side, but then you might need a water-filled flood barrier over here. Like there's, you know, that's why it's important that we come out and kind of look at, the, at your property. We meet with you. Um, and we kind of understand, you know, your risk and, and your vulnerability. Okay, well, that's great. And um, our, again, our audience here is going to be just short of Orlando, all the way down south to Marco Island. And I understand that you guys cover all of that area. Yeah, actually, if you if you know, there was some pictures in here um, of Marco Island, and there were some pictures of a couple of areas where you're talking about in between too um, that we had on the on the slide as well. Sure, and then additionally, our board members have second homes all over, including Canada. So, do you do you service nationwide and in Canada? Absolutely. So we service all over across the country. We've um, we've done South Carolina. We have projects in um, in both Carolinas. Actually, we've done Texas. We've been we've been all over, everywhere. And so um, we have different people in different locations. We also have people like in the New Jersey, New York area, um, and then we have people like over in Texas. So. Um, if we can't come out personally, which we always love meeting our, our clients personally, um, we also have other people that we can send out to look at the properties. Great. Well, hey, Tiffany, I want to thank you for your time today. This was so informative and I appreciate it. It's very um, current to what's going to be what we're all going to be thinking about soon. So uh, thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, get, tell T Steve we said hi, too. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. And please um, reach out to us if you guys need any information. We would be happy to help. Great. Thanks so much, Tiffany. And everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, continue to be safe and be well, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.